Warren is guilty of willful ignorance. You got to love that. Not just ignorance. But willful ignorance. And the reason why is because willful, yes. if you want to know, you can know. If you want to educate yourself, you can be educated. They choose the opposite. They choose not, not to educate themselves. They have chosen not to approach those in the space that are in the know. And it takes those in the space in the know to call them out. So Susan mm -hmm. Friedman calling her out, calling her to the mat and really putting it, you know, the way it needs to be put. Hey, hey, everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan. And that was Chip and Jeff from On The Chain Channel. If you like that longer discussion format of crypto, you're really going to like their channel. I'm going to put a link to it in the description below. What they were talking about is the unsubstantiated, non-factual tweets that were coming out of the Senator Warren's Twitter account. There is a lot going on there, and you really want to know the details. Uh, Bank of America, yep, they don't see a crypto winner anytime soon. I will cover that. We're going to take a look at the market, of course, and see what's driving this volume. And also Biden, wow, he made a huge mistake in the State of the Union address. I want you to listen to that. And is Russia getting around this airspace ban? Yes, they are, and I'll show you how. And last but not least, there is another Japanese bank using Ripple technology. They are now in the RippleNet financial network. And you can be sure that the building out of these payment rails is just enabling the inevitable on-demand liquidity, which uses the digital asset XRP to be used. We're just waiting for regs, because I can tell you, the liquidity on this side of the world coming from Japan is really set with Mr. Kitao, the CEO of SBI. All right, everybody, let's get to it. The market is strong. Bitcoin over 44,000, only 17 of the top 100 by market cap are down in the last 24 hours. That's, and, and they're just barely lower too. Now there's a couple of drivers. There was a report released on Tuesday from Arcane Research, and it showed that the Ukrainians were using Binance to snap up Tether and Bitcoin. So that volume in the Ukrainian currency shot up from what has usually been tracking at around 3 million over the last six weeks to 8.5 million. And it's because there is a serious and justifiable worry about the banking system. And then trading Bitcoin with rubles, that would be the Russian currency, it also surged, according to the analytics company Kaiko. Bitcoin trades are blowing up as the ruble has fell more than 30%. So you can track uh, one more driver, and that is the so far 50 million in cryptocurrency that's been donated in just four days to Ukraine. Currencies like um, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Tron, DOT, Harmony, Avalanche, Near, Solana, and uh, it's trackable on Slow Mist. Um, I think I'll put a link to it in the description because the uh, URL is a little bit long. Five million alone came from Gavin Wood. He's the Polkadot founder. And then the lead developer that he has offered to show the government how to stake. Can you believe it? Can't believe it. I mean, just this knowledge that is uh, happening so fast in how to uh, attain passive income through these digital currencies and uh, assets that are uh, really used in a in a DeFi protocol. <laughs> it just, I, I'm really speechless. I'm just shocked. Uh, unfortunately, someone commented, of course, on my Twitter feed that uh, it, it was war that, you know, is the catalyst. Um, yeah, maybe it is. But I just, uh, I guess I'm just taken aback at how fast the adoption and the utilization of digital assets has happened because of these geopolitical events. I'm just, as an observer, I'm shocked. President Biden finished his State of the Union address just a few hours ago, 
and announced that the U.S. was going to close off airspace to all Russian flights. Uh, I want to show you a very interesting image I found on Twitter. This is a Russian flight that is leaving Kaliningrad, and here that is right there. They are sandwiched between Lithuania and Poland, and so they can't fly over any EU space. So you can see that their flight path took them up here above uh, Estonia, below Helsinki, and then they dropped back down through Russia into Minsk here in Belarus. So I think there's going to be a lot of flights that take similar uh, routes that are very, very long to get around these uh, airspace restrictions. And also, wow, there was a huge mistake made by Biden in his address. He mixed up the countries Ukraine and Iran. Have a listen. Putin may circle Kiev with tanks, but he'll never gain the hearts and souls of the Iranian people. He'll never, he'll never escape his own love of freedom, and he will never, never weaken the resolve of the free world. Oh, gosh, the faith on Kamala Harris was just priceless. All right, I want to briefly just point out a tweet from Ashish Birla, Brad Garlinghouse, and Jake Travinsky, because they are all addressing the reality that Russia won't be using crypto anytime soon to evade the sanctions. What you really have here uh, are lots of reasons. For one, the regulated on and off ramps, they really don't go undetected. There is tracking software now that is very sophisticated. But most importantly, the liquidity of Bitcoin and ruble pair, it's nowhere near the liquidity needed to actually transact for Russia, which is somewhere in the neighborhood of 50 billion a day. And it has more of a liquidity of about 11 million. So it just can't be used. And why would they want to do that anyway, when they have these banking relationships, especially ones in Asia that can be utilized. And then if I take you to Jake Travinsky, he really, really laid it out in detail that Russia can't and won't use crypto to evade sanctions. And it is just uh, lots of reasons, but I think the big ones are that they can still do cross-border transactions. They just won't be using SWIFT. And crypto is way too transparent. And the other big point that Jake has is that Putin has been diversifying into yuan and gold, not crypto. So these pundits that are out there, I think, are really getting under the skin. Brad Garlinghouse today said, I continue to see asinine arguments from uninformed pundits on how crypto works. I want to reiterate what Ash Go Blue, that's Ashish, said yesterday. There are factual reasons why crypto can't be used on a broad scale for Russia to evade sanctions. And why this is so important is because you've got people who are in Congress, like Senator Elizabeth Warren, putting these tweets out that cryptocurrencies risk undermining sanctions against Russia, allowing Putin and his cronies to evade economic pain. That's just not true. And the U.S. financial regulators need to take this threat seriously and increase their scrutiny of digital assets. I, you know, I, I really gave this a lot of thought today. And what I'm thinking, yeah, she's, a, she's definitely uh, needs to be criticized for not doing her research. But also, too, I think you need to point out that the authors of these uh, articles should be under the spotlight and squarely uh, put into a, <laughs> a public forum to ask them, why are they making it possible to spread this kind of information? And, you know, the two that wrote this New York Times article, uh, it's, it's a shame because one of them, is writing on technology often. And so it's just disappointing, right? I will point out though, here is a writer that's doing a great job. This to, this is Christian Hetzner. He uh, is writing for Fortune and he did write an article that highlighted Ashish's tweets and 
Despite fears, his title says, crypto is no viable alternative to SWIFT for sanctioned Russian banks. I just want to say thank you to him for really putting forth uh, a good article that is backed with facts. And so um, as we come on to the eve of uh, Jerome Powell having to face questions from the U.S. lawmakers on Wednesday, he's going to give his semi-annual monetary policy update to Congress. Uh, this is going to be, I think, most interesting. Wow. Yeah. Can't wait. All right. Let's move on. I put out a tweet a couple of hours ago about another Japanese bank using Ripple technology. This would be Shimane Bank in Shimane Prefecture. They will be using MoneyTap. And this is further building out a powerful financial infrastructure of RippleNet. And of course, it's thanks to SBI. SBI being the largest, largest outside shareholder of Ripple and really making sure that all these payment rails are laid down throughout Asia, because once the regs are in place, you'll be able to get that ODL, on-demand liquidity, that uses the digital asset XRP into play. So the uh, SBI website has that announcement. Yep, it just came out today, just a, just a few hours ago. I want to show you where Shimane is. So where my mouse is, is Tokyo, right here. And Shimane is this prefecture over on the backside, very conservative, <laughs> a very conservative part of Japan. Uh, so conservative so that they even have a series of videos for your everyday rules and manners for the foreigners living there. <laughs> I think if you are interested in taking a look at that, you'll be able to see how strict Japan is for its uh, use of bicycles and. Uh, how to live peacefully with your neighbors, and of course, the garbage rules. This country has garbage rules like you would not believe, and it is adhered to so strictly. And if you break those rules, oh, you become a very bad neighbor very fast. So if that kind of interests you to see how <laughs> how this society is so rule-based. Um, yeah, it has its its upside and its downside, right? Upside is it's very organized. It's very predictable. Uh, it's very comfortable because you're not going to get this <laughs> crazy, uh, you know, neighbor that's, that's going to be a problem. But at the same time, you are also kind of trapped in this system of <laughs> being a good neighbor that follows the rules or you are you are really uh, you are really on the outside <laughs> so oh gosh Japan okay I think it's time everybody to jump to the fluff tomorrow in Japan is a big day it is March 3rd and that is girls day or what's called Hinamatsuri and there's dolls that are put out everywhere in the homes. Uh, you'll find them in the banks. Uh, if you go into the hospitals, if you go into any public space, basically, there is this celebration. And the dolls are dressed in a traditional court dress of the Heian period. That would be around the year 1000. So it's about the same time the Vikings of Scandinavia were doing their thing in northern Europe. And the auspicious festival is tied to when the peach trees typically begin to flower. So you'll start to see some of those peach blossoms uh, come out. And uh, of course, they're, they're as beautiful as the cherry blossoms. But the dolls in their, um, in their full tiered display, which is shown here, can be rather expensive. Uh, you'll pay anywhere from 1500 to 2500 for the entire set. And these are handed down from mother to daughter. And when they get to be, you know, handed down after, I don't know, five generations, uh, they are falling into the line of being a vintage set. And then they can even triple in value depending on the condition. And um, another really fun part about this holiday are the... Uh, special rice cakes and strawberries and sakura mochi that is made 
No, 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 Chibi. No, this is not your holiday. You have to wait for Boys Day for that one. Yeah, Chibi just making a lot of noise here. This is the Sakura Mochi, and it's a rice cake that's wrapped in uh, cherry cherry blossom leaf. Uh, it's it's really hard to find, but on March third, you can find it everywhere. And I think even if you don't celebrate with little girls uh, in your family, I think you pop a couple of these into your basket because they are so yummy. And then there is a very famous Japanese patissier who, who is uh, Junichi Mitsubori. I've, I've featured him before on the fluff. This is his this year's spring celebration of, of creations and works of art that he does uh, within the um, uh, wagashi, which is the uh, traditional mochi, the rice cake really really beautiful right and if you are not into the fancy stuff well then you can celebrate with just a little bit of a curry curry udon or cur curry noodles with the <laughs> with the cooked egg on top and you can make your your empress just come out all in uh in ingredients of food oh chibi chibi i can't i can't take care of you right now so I better go and say, um, take care, sayonara for now, and I'll take care of Mr. Chibi here. Bye-bye.